Cordy joins us this morning on the Harbor One Hotline. Hey, Devin. Hey, man. What's happening? Well, first and foremost, the the topic that is on everybody's mind, and that is Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. And what does the firing of Mike Vrabel say to you, if anything, uh, about who will be coaching this football team next season? Um. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't really say anything to me yet because we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Right? I don't think we all have, or you know, when you look at the insiders or what everybody's saying, it looks like this foregone conclusion that this has already happened. Like this decision is already made. So then it could have an impact. But until whatever New England is going to do with Coach Belichick happens, like to me, everything else is just news. Like. By the time they do what they do, is Verbal already going to be a favorite somewhere else? Like, who knows? Um, but I think it does. Like, from the outside looking in, it adds this whole other component of, oh, man, now Verbal's free. Like, what are they going to do? So, um, I don't know. Like, I've talked to different people, and they're like, oh, no, that decision's been made. But it's like, well, why isn't it made? And, like, no one really knows what's happening. The argument uh, against Mike Verbal came up earlier during Curtis's lead. And that is you're going to part ways with Bill and get a guy who uh, only ended up getting six wins this season. I mean, I think the decision has to be made on who gives the team the best outlook and everything going forward. Like, it can't be what happened a year ago. It can't be bringing guys back because they won championships. Like, it has to be a look at, hey, like, who do we think is going to be the next best coach? Is it still going to be Bill Belichick? Is it going to be somebody else? Does it have to be somebody that was once a part of the Patriots as a player or a coach? Or does it need to be somebody brand new? I think those are the decisions that have to be made. I think from the outside looking in, we all see, like, this cool story of whoever's next is, like, this homegrown person who was a part of the culture that needs to be that. But, like, we don't know if, if ownership is thinking that. So um, I, I think that's what's so hard about making these decisions because then, on the other hand, you hear of all of these teams or a couple teams now waiting to see what New England does <laughs> because they're like, well, if Bill Belichick's not going to be there, we want him in our building. So it, it, it's a very interesting thing where now we're all sitting here waiting of, like, all right, how long – it's just going to play out until we know for sure who's going to be the coach of the New England Patriots for 2024. Dev, a couple of the issues that I think people been talking about with Bill is he willing to maybe give up some power in the sense of bringing guys in, whether it's free agency or the draft. And the other one, and I think you could obviously answer both of these, and is he relatable enough to today's player? Can he change? Can he evolve? Um, so what do you think? Do you think he could give up some of that power? Do you think that's something he's willing to do? And do you think he can relate to some of these players that play today? Yeah, I think the first part is all about relationships. I think I think there can definitely be somebody else that's in there, but I think it has to be it has to be a good working relationship, right? All of the rumors with, you know, Mike Vrabel being fired is about him and Ray Carlton's relationship of it not working. Now, they, uh, Ray Carlton came out and said, no, they had a good work relationship, but it seems like all the insiders or people around Tennessee feel like that was the main issue. So, to me, if you bring in somebody where this relationship is kind of, there's tension, there's not a lot of trust, then what happens, like, you get the number three pick, what happens if, Bill says, I want this guy, but he says, I want that guy. Now you have, like, this huge issue. So I think it's possible, but I think it has to be, like, this perfect marriage. Of when we look around the NFL, like we saw McVay and Snead draft Puka Nakua, like, those guys were lock and step together on the decisions they were making. Like, it has to be that, and they would have to determine if you can find that. And then I think the second part is, I think it's interesting because we, we now have, like, this whole thought of because he's older, um, he doesn't relate to guys. I'll be interested to know how, like, the guys in Seattle feel about Pete Carroll because you do hear in the locker room some guys who are like like Pepper, like Jabril Peppers is like, 
it's on us. Like Bill keeps getting blamed, but we're not executing the things that he sits here and talks about to start the day off every single day. And he says, if we don't do these things, this will happen in the game. And then it happens in the game. And people who have sat in Bill Belichick's meetings, you know that happens. So I think they will have to determine, was that the issue with this team going forward? Or is it personnel decisions? Like, what is the main issues that they feel like um, are happening while they're not winning? And it seems like that's what they're trying to figure out over these next few days. But I just wonder how long you let that process draw out while these other teams are making decisions and moving forward. Devin, who do you blame for the Patriots' lack of free agent spending? Is that that's the question we ask? We obviously don't have the experience you do in negotiating with the organization. Is that Kraft or Bill? In other words, if Bill leaves, will the problem remain because it's Kraft's way of thinking? So I think if Bill leaves, well, like we won't know. I'll say from my experience, I've always felt like it was both of them. It wasn't just you know Bill going rogue and doing whatever he wanted. Um, it was always them being together, whether I talked to Bill, whether I talked to RKK, you know, it was like, all right, if I talk to Bill, it's all right, I talk to Robert and see how this is going to work out. Like, what do we need to do? Because it was that, like, you, it, it's, it's Mr. Kraft's money. Like, he's the owner of the team. So, you know, I can only speak on my experience when I was a free agent. It was, it was both of them, uh, them being – and understanding whatever decision that was made, Kraft was involved in when I signed back the first time as a free agent. Um, he was actively involved in that. So um, I don't know if that's what happens for every free agent signing, that it goes through that process. Um, but, you know, I've always felt like those two guys were like anybody else as a team. This has to all work together where we know what's going on as far as who we're signing, what we're spending. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think Kraft's in there evaluating the talent and saying, you know, this is the guy we need to do, this is that. But I think he's aware and understands what they're trying to build and who the guys are that are, are coming into the building. Devin, I think a lot of insiders or fans thought that we were going to get some type of answer really quickly. Are you surprised that nothing came out on Monday, that no answer was given on Monday? And if you are, should we read into the fact that we got through Monday without an answer, whether good or bad for Bill? I mean, that's the unique thing about this place, right? Like, there's never this straightforward answer or this, this one act that comes right away, I think. These other teams have known, you know, for most of the season that they were going to move on. I think Tennessee was a little bit of the exception of they kind of thought or they were going back and forth and there's happened a little later. I think it is the uniqueness of in New England. There's a guy that's been there for 24 years. Like you've operated one way, and I think both sides feel like if this isn't going to work, we shouldn't make this decision, you know, over one the season and Sunday and then Monday morning we're moving on like there's been too much history um back and forth too much winning seasons to just say like this is done so it seems like they're going a different process of let's truly sit down and see what's happening what's going wrong how do you feel how do I feel and then let's determine what happens moving forward um but again like the thing that surprises me will be what exactly that timetable is like the rest of the league doesn't stop and wait. So how long does this take? What happens of how many things do we need to go through? How long are these meetings? Um, that to me is a thing that I would love to know, but we probably won't know. Probably tough to pick, but if you had to, which game are you most looking forward to this weekend? Oh, I think, I think it's definitely the, the Kansas city Miami game because you have this uniqueness of the defending Super Bowl champions coming back to defend their title, and you have the team that at one, at sometimes they look like the hottest team in the league, <laughs> score points. Then at other times they look like they can't beat anybody because they have only beat on one team above 500. But on the other side, Kansas City hasn't you know been this great team, and now you have this game where it's supposed to be one of the coldest games in playoff history, but 
Miami should be a team that can go in there and win, but the injury. So to me, it's like we're going to watch all playoffs. Like, does this Patrick Mahomes, you know, AFC Championship, Tom Brady, New England Patriots, uh, Act Two of the Dynasty, do they end early or do they keep this going um, by getting a chance to play Miami at home in the cold? Is this kind of like the perfect storm for them to move forward in the playoffs? Um, it, to me, it is going to be one of the, the bright things to see um, in this game. And I think the second thing is obviously it's the Jared Goff and Matt Stafford. Like, how, like who could have picked a better thing? It, it's just so many of these storylines are coming true in the playoffs that make all these games so much fun to watch. Dev, you talked about working relationship with Bill and, you know, potentially the GM and who the new GM is. Even if it's not Bill and if it's another uh, another coach, if it's Rabel, Mayo, is it a no-brainer with the top three picks this year? Because I, I, I feel like it it is. The two quarterbacks and Marvin Harrison. So is that what we should expect uh, as Patriots fans, that we should end up with one of three of those uh, those guys? I mean, that's what I would think. I know there's some... Um there's some tackles that are, are possible guys that uh, could be looked at to be top picks in the draft. Um, but I look at, like, the Bengals, you know, you get Joe Burrow, you have some, you know, he has a rough first year getting sacked, all of that. You get a top pick again, you know, they take Jamar Chase. They build the offensive line a different way. And free agency, getting guys a little later, but they take Jamar Chase and you look up and you're like, the team's in the Super Bowl. So they've had to figure out their offensive line that way, um, whereas I think for the Patriots, you look up, if Marvin Harrison Jr. is that kind of receiver like we've seen with Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, then to me, you, like, you you got to take them and you have some money for free agency. Like, you got to build your offensive line that way and finding those guys that have been good players, um, maybe go on some of these teams that have – an influx of good players that they've drafted on the offensive line, which seems to be hard to find nowadays in the NFL. But um, I think you have to take whoever you feel like is that rare game-changing, franchise-changing player if you get a top-five pick. And if Marvin Harrison Jr. is that, then you take him. Devin, with the wild card weekend starting uh, on Saturday, is there one team you have your eye on that you think might be able to make like a kind of like Cinderella esque run to the Super Bowl? Like for me, I kind of look at that Rams team; they're healthy. That offense seems to be clicking, and then I look at the Cleveland Browns because that defense has been awesome all year, and somehow, some way, Joe Flacco has kind of conjured up some magic. So I'm curious if there's a team you have your eye on that could make a uh, a crazy run here. All right, well, you just took two of my favorites that I feel like are in that in that situation. I'll say the other team is I say the Houston Texans. If they can if they can beat Cleveland um, this weekend, I think because of their story, the run that they've been on, the way that CJ Stroud has played as a rookie. I know some of the injuries hurt them, um, but if Noah Brown can can be healthy and and Robert Woods, I think that could be a good. Uh, boss and boost for them, and Grenard comes back at defensive end. Um, I think if they can get a win, they'll be so confident, and they don't know any better, right? They're a young team that they'll just go play anybody, anywhere, um, that they could be a dangerous team as well. But my top two teams would be what you mentioned, the Rams and the Browns. I feel like the Buffalo Bills also got something out of that, that whole uh, issue when it came to the – 9-11 reference, and uh, I, I, I feel like they may have come together over that. Yeah, and, and to me, they're the one team that took a different route to get here, but they're the one team that we expected to kind of be here. Like We expected this team to be Super Bowl contenders, but we do now look at them that way because of how you know painful it was for them to get to this spot. But, you know, when you watch this team, like, you take away the two interceptions that Josh Allen threw early in Miami, they have times where you're like, man, like this team's a problem. Like defensively, they found a rhythm even with all the injuries, and then they had more injuries last week. That's what it seems like too. Like attrition, just like guys staying healthy. Like Buffalo lost Gabe Davis. 
Um, Douglas, Rasul Douglas went down. Dotson, who has stepped up at linebacker, he went down last week against Miami. So, like, a lot of these teams you're looking like, well, who's going to be out there? Like, for them to go out there and try to win games because right now you look at, like, healthy Baltimore, healthy San Francisco. These teams look very scary to play. But these other teams, like you said, if they're healthy and they can find some ways, like I wouldn't want to play against Josh Allen in the playoffs. Like that's a that's an issue. <laughs> yeah. All right, Devin. Uh, thanks for taking the time this morning. And weekend is almost here, mm-hmm. and we will talk to you again next week. Yeah, and who knows what we could be talking about next week? Who's the head yeah. coach next Wednesday, Devin? With the Patriots, are we still um, in limbo, or do we know? Yeah, or do we know? Your, your guess is as good as mine. I feel like. What everyone thought, I think we all thought by Wednesday morning there would be a decision made, but they're going through the process. So, like, I, I feel it's 50-50. It could be Bill Belichick or it could be somebody brand new. And I think if it's somebody brand new, my guess would still be Gerard Mayo, um, even with everything else going on. Um, I think if it's not Bill, then it's Mayo. Uh, running the New England Patriots, but I think it's I think it's honestly fifty fifty right now. All right, Devin. Well, it'll be exciting to talk to you. Hopefully, we have an answer when we talk to you next week about it. All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Have a good one. All right, that is Devin McCourty. Wednesdays on this <laughs> show.